Hey, welcome to another episode of Five Minute Computer Science. My name is Mr. K, and today we're going to be looking at memory management. So, how does the CPU manage memory? And how does the operating system work with the CPU in order to keep your programs running, your downloads downloading, and everything to run smoothly? So we're going to be looking at things like paging and virtual memory, segmentation, and those kind of things. So let's put five minutes on the clock. Let's go for it, man. So let's have a look at an operating system and what it does. Well, an operating system essentially is the go between a user and some hardware, or a user and an application. And this can simply be understood like this. Assume you've got some work on a USB. Okay, you've got a USB, you've got some work on it. Well, you're using an application, let's say this is Microsoft Word. Okay. Well, how does Microsoft Word get a hold of the file on the USB? Well, it has to go through the operating system. So the operating system contacts the USB, collects the data, passes it on to the application, and then the application, of course, is displayed on screen via some kind of monitor or whatever it might be. The operating system is actually responsible for quite a lot of work. But it does much more than that. Bear in mind, an operating system has to run a number of programs at the same time. And therefore, it needs to manage memory. Now, how it manages memory is by scheduling jobs for the CPU in an order to make sure that lots of different programs can be running at the same time. But to you and me, the users, it appears that our operating system is multitasking. So memory management is absolutely key here. You might well be running a number of different programs like a word processor, a web browser, you might be doing your computer science homework or whatever it is. But of course the CPU can only process one instruction at a time. But by managing memory, managing the RAM, managing the hard drive, etc. It can appear as though you're multitasking and that's part of the job of the operating system is controlling the CPU. Here's a little technique that you need to be familiar with. It's called paging. Now, in an ideal world, when we save instructions and data into RAM, we want everything to be physically next to each other. And that'd be helpful if the first line of couple of lines of code were on page zero and the next line of code were on page one, etc. But in reality, RAM is split between lots of different parts, or in this instance, frames. So this is the order we want to access it: page zero, then page one, page two, and page three. But what the operating system does, it keeps a paging table to keep track of where everything is physically. So page zero is actually in frame one, page one is in frame four, page two is in frame three, and the page table knows this. So the page table knows that in order to access frame zero, we need to go there, okay? And in order to access the next set of code or whatever it might be, page zero, we need to go to frame four, and then in order to access the next frame, page two, we need to go to frame three. And of course, RAM is just filled up as and when it's required. And so a page table is used to ensure that all the different parts of the program that are needed can be accessed whenever needed. Here's another example of what you need to be aware of. Segmentation. Now, segmentation is about doing something very similar to paging, but rather than having a fixed size frame like we saw earlier, here the frames can be of different sizes. So you'll notice that segment zero, this bit here, segment zero starts at base address 500 and its size is 600. Okay, so this is a the length of that segment. And segment two over here starts at base address 1500 and its length is 400. So in this instance, the length of the actual segments are depending upon the amount of data that you're collecting. Okay, so take a minute to pause and read through this particular example. Virtual memory we've already covered, so I'm going to skip that. You can go back and watch one of the earlier videos. And we're going to finish up by looking at process scheduling. Now, process scheduling is about taking all the different programs that are running at the same time and breaking them down into smaller easy to process instructions and then passing them on to the CPU one at a time. So a computer with a single processor can only process one instruction at a time. But of course, you might have 10 different programs running. And so the operating system uses something called a job scheduler to take those processes. So you might have the first three processes of a particular program and the next two might be for a different program. The next might be for an antivirus program perhaps. And they are broken down. 
and the job scheduler ensures that the CPU is giving a fair amount of time to each of those programs so they can be processed in the background and for you and I it appears that they're all happening at the same time whereas in reality it's the job schedule's job to make sure that all of that is processed in an instance. All right, that's it. I hope that was an easy to understand video. I'm going to leave you with a specification. Thank you for watching 5-Minute Computer Science.